Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with a guest post for Austin in August. So as it sounds, Austin in August is a month-long event about all things Jane Austen. It was created and is run by Misty over at the Book Rat or Book Rat Misty. I will link her book blog and her booktube channel down below. And this year she's doing something different where she opens some of the posting opportunities to uh, guest guest booktubers or guest book bloggers in addition to authors and people like that. So I was really excited to have the opportunity to do this um, and the topic that I'm going to be talking about today is Mansfield Park and specifically the ending of Mansfield Park and how we're supposed to feel about it. I'm going to be making the argument that that famously unsatisfying ending is actually supposed to be that way um, and kind of looking at some of the reasons why I think that and at least attempting to interpret or draw conclusions about why Jane Austen might have written it the way she did. So first off, um, I think Mansfield Park is pretty much known for being one of her less popular works in in current times um, from my own experience and also from studying like reviews of it or uh, like scholarly works and everything about Mansfield Park it seems to be at the bottom of a lot of people's lists uh, one of their least favorite novels by Jane Austen and I think there's a few reasons for this um, a lot of times people mention Fanny Price being the main character and how she's not as she doesn't seem as uh, fully developed as some of Jane Austen's characters are. She's not what modern audiences like to see in a main character. And that doesn't necessarily make her a bad protagonist, but I do think that's part of the reason why this book is not as popular as, you know, Pride and Prejudice or Emma or Persuasion. Um, it's harder for, I think, modern readers to really connect to Fanny Price the way that Jane Austen's contemporary readers would have. But I think another big part of the reason is that the ending of Mansfield Park is so very different from Jane Austen's other novels in the way that everything works out and in how kind of dissatisfied I think a lot of readers are left feeling after it. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about is my perspective, my belief that Jane Austen intentionally wrote the ending to feel kind of dissatisfying. And specifically I mean the resolution of Fanny's love life and the fact that she ends up marrying Edmund, which is what she wanted and it seems like what he eventually wants. But I think the way it's written isn't exactly what I would have wanted and I don't think it's what other people would have wanted, judging by the reviews I've heard for Mansfield Park. So first off, I think it's important to acknowledge that Jane Austen is obviously very capable of writing good romances. Um, whatever your favorite novel of hers is, like Pride and Prejudice or Emma or Persuasion, like she's definitely really good at writing romantic relationships. I mean, even Northanger Abbey, which is arguably the closest to Mansfield Park in how cynical some of the romance feels, even that one isn't that cynical. You know, that line where the narrator sort of breaks the fourth wall a little bit and addresses the fact that basically Mr. Tilney fell in love with Catherine because she fell in love with him first, and sometimes that's how romances start. Even though that novel is arguably closer to Mansfield Park than some of her other works in the way it approaches romance as being somewhat unromantic, um, I don't think that's anywhere near Mansfield Park, because even the way that Northanger Abbey ends, it's not so much cynical about romance or about marriage as it is about like, sometimes relationships develop for shallow or petty reasons, like somebody liking you first. And Sense and Sensibility is another example of this for me, because, like, the Colonel Brandon and Marianne relationship, that's not my favorite love story she's written, for a lot of reasons. Um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with some of it, and even though I admire the way it was developed and written, it's, it's just not my favorite for a lot of reasons. But it makes sense in the context of the story, and I can recognize that it is well written. So I feel like Jane Austen's like, general body of work speaks to the fact that it's not like she's just not good at writing a romance. It's not like she wrote Mansfield Park and was suddenly incapable of writing a convincing love story. Um, at least I don't think that's what happened. So I also want to mention the timing of when she was writing these and the chronology of her novels. Uh, Mansfield Park was written right after Pride and Prejudice. Uh, which I think is really very interesting choice because you pretty much couldn't pick two of her novels that are more different from each other in my opinion. There's that famous quote from Jane Austen where she herself is talking about Pride and Prejudice and how it's a little too light and bright and sparkling with kind of the implication that she would have liked it to be I don't know, more deep or meaningful or to have some more serious elements going on in addition to being like the really wonderful romantic comedy that people know it for. Like there is a lot of social commentary and there are some pretty serious obstacles that the characters face and I don't think it I don't think it obscures some of the hardships of living in Jane Austen's world, um, specifically for people of a lower income and especially for girls of a lower income. I don't think it ignores those, but compared to some of her other works, it's definitely a lighter look at them. So for her to write that and then to write Mansfield Park right after that, I think that's a really interesting choice and I kind of see that as it feels almost like Jane Austen is stretching her abilities as a writer. You know, she just wrote this really fluffy romantic comedy um, and now she wants to try something very different. And that I think also speaks to the idea that um, the way that Mansfield Park ends and the general tone of the novel I think was a very deliberate choice. Like I don't think it's like a failed romance, you know, I think she intentionally wrote something different from Pride and Prejudice. And I think another reason that um, she may have written Mansfield Park right after Pride and Prejudice is almost as a 
a warning maybe to girls who fell in love with Mr. with Mr. Darcy and Pride and Prejudice that the Mr. Darcy character or the the perceived villain character doesn't always change for you. Um, he's very different from Henry Crawford and personality wise you could argue that Wickham is more is more comparable to Henry Crawford than Darcy is but they're both kind of set up as romantic leads. Uh, Mr. Darcy successfully and Henry Crawford obviously not and so I can't help looking at that as a little bit of like Jane, Jane's cynical side coming out, you know, and kind of warning readers, like especially women, um, that sometimes the charming bad boy stays, stays bad, you know, uh, he's not, he doesn't change for you. And of course we can't know that, we can't know her intentions for writing things a certain way, but I think given the timeline and given J what we know of Jane Austen's personality, I think it's not impossible that that is part of the reason. And as an example of the intentional differences between Mansfield Park and some of her other novels, so this is at the point where uh, Edmund is beginning to realize that he is actually in love with Fanny, or he is transferring his affections from Mary Crawford to Fanny. With such a regard for her, indeed, as his had long been, a regard founded on the most endearing claims of innocence and helplessness, and completed by every recommendation of growing worth, what could be more natural than the change? Loving, guiding, protecting her, as he had been doing ever since her being ten years old, her mind in so great a degree formed by his care, and her comfort depending on his kindness, an object to him of such close and peculiar interest, dearer by all his own importance with her than any one else at Mansfield, what was there now to add, but that he should learn to prefer soft light eyes to sparkling dark ones. So the parts I want to highlight in that, um, the fact that the most endearing claims that Fanny has are innocence and helplessness, uh, the fact that he has been loving, guiding, and protecting her since she was 10, her mind in so great a degree formed by his care, and her comfort depending on his kindness. Those are all things that do not sound very romantic to me. Um, I don't remember any other romantic relationship in, in Jane Austen's novels being written in such a way, um, like the main male lead being attracted by the helplessness of the female lead, or the fact that he's basically getting to tell her what to read and what to think. So to me that says that there was a deliberate choice on Jane Austen's part of writing writing the relationship between Edmund and Fanny in this way. Uh, it doesn't feel very romantic, it feels a little bit creepy to be honest, and there are a few references to Fanny's own worth, um, her own charms, you know, the fact that she is very kind and that she was in love with Edmund, um, that she's a very good person. Like there are references to traits of hers that she has that would make her lovable, that would make Edmund fall in love with her, but the way that the other things are phrased I think kind of outweighs that. Like the idea of Jane Austen romanticizing a, a woman feeling helpless and dependent on the man that she marries, that doesn't happen. So I think that there has to be a reason that she wrote it that way. And I also think it's worth noting that Fanny herself is really happy with the way things turn out. Um, Edmund obviously is too, but Fanny as the main character, she she's thrilled. I mean she gets she gets the happy ending she wanted. So it's so interesting to me that like the protagonist is happy, gets everything she wants, but the reader doesn't feel satisfied with it. Fanny is happy but the reader isn't. It's almost like we want better for her, you know? Um, even though she doesn't think she deserves better, like that she could even get better than than Edmund. She thinks that he's like all that is wonderful in the world of men. Um, it's almost like the reader thinks she could do better. Even if, even if we don't like her, we want better for her. You know, we want her to be with someone who appreciates her for more than the fact that he got to tell her what to think, you know? So I think a lot of modern readers uh, read this book as Fanny making the best of things, but deserving better, you know, deserving more, deserving a real love story instead of somebody who seems to be attracted to her primarily for the fact that she's innocent and helpless. I think that's something that's hard for modern readers to stomach, and I think it's I think it's supposed to be, even though at the time when Jane Austen was writing this, the people reading this book would have been much less horrified by the things that Edmund is attracted to in Fanny. It would have been pretty reasonable. Um, I think that even at the time we were supposed to see a contrast between the way that Edmund falls in love with Fanny and the way that so many of her other heroes fall in love with the main female characters. So if kind of the main question that I'm addressing in this video is why does Mansfield Park end that way? Um, I guess my, my argument, my personal belief, based on some of the evidence or uh, opinions, suppositions I have talked about, is that number one it's supposed to be unsatisfying, so that that is its intention, and the second part of that is the reason that it was supposed to be unsatisfying. And one possibility that I personally find convincing is that Jane Austen was writing about how a happy ending doesn't look the same for everybody. Sometimes you just hope that 
things turn out the best they could, you know, rather than the best you could wish for. And in this case, you know, Fanny does feel like she got the best she wished for. I mean, she's ecstatic that the man she's been in love with for so long finally loves her back. Objectively, that does sound like a happy ending, but for some reason it doesn't always play that way to people who read it. It's kind of like when you have friends who are dating or involved with somebody who you personally would never be attracted to or would never want to be involved with, but your friend is really happy and it's like you're happy for them, but at the same time you're kind of like, why would you date this person instead of this person that I think would be the best? So to kind of sum up this whole like, why does Mansfield Park end in such an unsatisfying way? Um, I've talked about a few reasons. You know, there's a possibility that Jane Austen was adding a dose of reality after coming off the high of Pride and Prejudice. She kind of wanted to calm, calm people down and make them realize that sometimes you just want someone who's going to treat you well and you're not going to have a great love story by, by these other standards. There's also the, the possibility that she just was wanting to write something very different. Like, you know, it was almost from a literary skill perspective of, like, she was challenging herself, you know, like, can I write a happy ending that makes people unhappy? <laughs> uh, which I think she kind of succeeded at. And then there's the last point that I was just talking about that I hopefully, hopefully managed to explain. Something I find most interesting about Mansfield Park, and the reason that I appreciate it more as a novel every single time I read it, is that it's very clever in the way it forces us to look at what we make of happiness, like what we consider uh, a happy ending or a great love story or a satisfying life and how that can be very different from what somebody else wants when it's us versus a friend of ours or when it's a book versus reality the idea of well maybe fanny didn't really get a fairy tale romance but by a lot of standards of her day she got she got the absolute best she could have ever wanted so personally i think it's kind of a combination of those reasons um obviously it's hard to know exactly what Jane Austen's intentions were. Pretty much impossible to know exactly why she wrote this book and why she wrote it the way she did. Um, but hopefully I was able to back up my theories with a little bit of evidence. Please let me know how you guys uh, feel about Mansfield Park and specifically about the ending. Do you think it's supposed to piss us off a little? Do you think we're supposed to feel unsatisfied? Or do you think it's supposed to be a happy ending and maybe Jane Austen just didn't succeed this time? I'd just be really interested to hear what you guys think. If you agree or disagree with what I said here and why, I would just be really fascinated to hear that because one thing you have to admit from Mansfield Park is it might not be a lot of people's favorite, but there is a lot to discuss with this novel. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, thank you again, Misty, for having me as a guest for Austin in August. I will see you guys soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!